What is up, MMA fans? This is to the Leonte for sure.com. And today I have the pleasure to talk with the Ultimate Fighter Season 2019 winner and now UFC fighter, Mr. Brian Battle. Hello, sir. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on the show today, brother. Thank you for coming back. We already spoke once in January, I believe. It was ahead of your fight with uh, Trisha Gore. You won that fight. We discuss about that in a bit. But what have you been up to uh, in the meantime? Man, I, I, I've just been up to getting better, man. You know, uh, you know, there's, you know, uh, for me, you know, I don't know how everybody else is in the UFC, but uh, for me, it's like uh, being here, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's always a dream, but. Uh, at the same time, you know, there's a bunch of monsters in the UFC. And uh, I've just been trying to turn myself into the biggest monster that there is so I can beat all these other monsters. So I've just been training, man, just training and hanging out with my family. That's all I've been doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I understand. And of course, usually they say that it's easy, you know, to get into the UFC. But then the hard part is staying there. Do you agree yeah. with that? I, I mean, it. It's either get better or die. That's how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? You cannot stay like, um, uh, like uh, if I had gotten complacent after I won tough, if I had like gotten a big head and thought I was hot stuff, uh, then, you know, I don't think I would last very long in the UFC. Um, you know, with as good as the guys are in the UFC, um, you know, you really have to take advantage of any resources you have to get as good as possible. So, um, you know, yeah, no, the UFC is definitely different. You know what I'm saying? Fighting the dudes in the UFC is definitely different. So, uh, but you know, this is what, this is what we're here for. You know what I'm saying? This is what I've been training for my whole career. So I'm very excited. Yeah, for sure. I, I understand that. And well, right now you are on the biggest stage of them all and you can showcase your skills to the UFC audience. Uh, just like you did in February when you took a decision over Trishan Gore, uh, was that the fight you were imagining? No, nah, no, not at all, not at all. Um, you know, I'm happy I got the win, uh, but there was just so many um, things I could have done differently or, you know, um, there was a lot of openings that I didn't, I didn't take advantage of. Um, not to mention, I, I really didn't anticipate him being so gun shy either. You know, there was a lot of times where I was trying to get him to throw so I could, you know, do something afterwards, but you know, he didn't throw a whole lot. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to get timing on somebody when they throw so few times in a fight, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so no, that, that fight didn't really go how I anticipated it. And, um, you know, I, there's, there's still certain things that I would have liked to do differently, but at the end of the day, you know, I still got the W, you know what I mean? I got paid twice that night. So, um, you know, I'm never going to complain about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I was about to say still, you seem pretty satisfied, you know, with the, your victory, uh, and, and then what were some of the adjustments you made after that fight? Um, after that fight, I mean, um, since then I've, uh, you know, started training, uh, at dime boxing with, uh, coach James, just to clean up some of my technique, clean up some of my form, develop some more power in my punches. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause you know, people think I don't have power. I got some power. I just have to use it the right way. You know what I'm saying? I haven't been using it all the way. I haven't been, uh, uh penetrating with my punches. I've been touching people, not punching people. So that's something that I'm looking forward to showing off in this next fight is uh, what happens when I really crack somebody. Um, also, just playing uh, playing with different levels. Um, there was one point in the fight where I did a, a, a fake shot and I came up for a punch and uh, he bit on the fake shot and, you know, my punch actually went over his head. If I had thrown a different punch, you know, it, it could have been a very different situation. Um, but, you know, also just having a, a, a little bit more faith 
in myself and my ability and just, you know, putting on, putting on, stepping on the gas, you know what I'm saying? I think I gave um, Trey a little bit too much respect and the respect that I gave him ended up putting me in bad situations. Like I did not need to go backwards the whole fight. And I, I didn't anticipate, I didn't plan on going backwards the whole fight. It was just kind of what ended up happening. Cause you know, in the first round, I was just kind of picking them apart. And I was just like, okay, well, I guess this is how I'm going to do this. Um, uh, not to mention, you know, I could, you know, it's at the apex. So I can hear people. I can hear like the commentators and, you know, uh, you know, uh, some of my coaches, you know, like just begging me to keep on moving. And, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, there was definitely a lot of good things I did, but there was definitely a lot of things where uh, I should have, there's certain situations where I should have planted my feet and gone forward, uh, certain more up and down. Uh, if I had played a little bit more up and down, I think that would have killed him. But, you know, I could go on all day. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things I could have did better in that fight, uh, which is exciting to me because I still won the fight and I, I didn't perform very well at all. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this next one. You know what I'm saying? We are looking forward to watching it too. And then there is the decision to drop a uh, weight class. Right now you're scheduled to take on Takeshi Sato on August the 6th, but it's going to be a welterweight fight while you competed at middleweight until this point. Um, well, I competed at middleweight because I couldn't have made welterweight before this point. Like even um, when I was on the, the show, um, You know, there was a, a, I had a couple of teammates that are like, you know, I think you could make welterweight. And I was like, bro, I can't make welterweight. I'm the biggest guy on here, which I was. I was the heaviest guy uh, when I was on the show. Uh, but, you know, before I was on the show, I was working and training and I was doing the best I could. Uh, you know, you know, I was making my own diets, you know, it was bro science uh, and, uh, You know, I was working as hard as I possibly could, you know what I'm saying? But then after I got off the show uh, with more resources, it w enabled me to work even harder, you know. And uh, actually, after I fought Trey, my plan was to get bigger. I didn't I wasn't planning on dropping to 170. My plan was to get bigger. And I um, started up in my athletic training and doing more weight training so I could get just stronger and more athletic in general and uh i have gotten stronger i have gotten more athletic i've gotten faster but um my weight was going down instead of going up you know and that's with me not trying to lose weight so uh after it was it really was only a couple of weeks after you know maybe a month after the trey sean fight i decided to do a test cut to 170 hit the test cut. It went pretty well. And then after that, I hit up my manager. I was like, oh, I'm a welterweight now. You know, let them boys know I'm coming for them. How do you, do you feel your body is responding to that decision? Man, I, I feel like my body made the decision for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just like, like I said, this wasn't something where in my head, I was like, I need to be a welterweight and I'm hitting up people. I'm like, how can I drop down? Like, uh, it just kind of happened. I mean, um, Uh, obviously right now, uh, I'm not at my normal walk around weight, but I'm dieting, you know, I'm fully hydrated, you know, um, and I'm walking in the, the high eighties, you know what I'm saying? I woke up this morning in the high eighties. So, um, you know, just going to keep on working, keep on chipping away. Um, you know, if I had to, I could probably make weight this Friday if I had to, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. And, uh, I just, I'm really going to enjoy, um, the frame, uh, that I have at 170. And, you know, it's just, I, most of the people I've trained with all my life have been about, you know, the size of your average welterweight, but I fought in bigger weight classes. I've always been one of the bigger guys at my gym or just the biggest guys in the area period. So coming down, to 170 is actually very familiar for me I'm, i'm really used to the speed of the guys there i'm really used to the power the range of them so uh it's to me it's it was a no-brainer i'm pretty curious to see your performance at 170 um who is going to be in your corner 
uh, in my corner. Uh, my head coach, Tom Ziggler, is going to be in my corner. Um, uh, my big bro, um, who's been like a mentor to me my whole career, this is going to be uh, Keith Richardson, who um, he owns a gym. He's a pro fighter, uh, you know, fights for the PFL, or he signed with the PFL. He's going to have his first fight with them sometime. But um, he's going to be in my corner for the first time. And my third corner man is actually going to be my dad. Uh, which is going to be really fun because my dad, he's been to, he had gone to all my amateur fights, all my pro fights. Um, the only fights that he hasn't been able to go to are my fights since I've been doing stuff with the UFC. Like um, since I was, obviously you can go to the ultimate fighter fights, um, but even the fights in the apex, you know, the tickets aren't easy to come by. Um and so, you know, he's always, he's come out to Vegas both times. He's just watched the fight at like a casino or uh, one of the Vegas spots. And so, you know, being able to have him actually come into the corner and watch the fight live, that's going to be, it's going to be special. Yeah, I, I imagine that. Um, are you still working out to the game by Motorhead? <sighs> oh, um. I'm 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 thinking about I'm thinking about changing it this time just because uh you know the attitude you know what I'm saying like I'm changing so I'm thinking about changing changing my music a little bit too I haven't fully settled on what I'm gonna walk out to yet but um uh, but the game by Motorhead is just so perfect you know what I'm saying it's it, you can't go wrong with that song you know what I'm saying it's a great walkout song but um. Uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still a little bit on the fence, but I'm always a little bit on the fence. There's so many good songs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you have a point there. May, may I ask your main options at this point? Um, my main options right now are, you know, obviously I'm still thinking Motorhead, um, the game by Motorhead a little bit. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard Chill Bill by... Um, Uh, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on his name. But it's, it's a song called Chill Bill. Um, you know, they got it starts off with the whistling from um, Kill Bill, and Kill Bill is one of my favorite movies. It's a really fun song. Um, uh, New Level by ASAP Ferg, which is actually what I was known for walking out for before uh, I got onto the, the UFC scene uh and super plug by benny the butcher you know what i'm saying benny the butcher has been the person i've been listening to the most as of late and uh so you know and super plug is my favorite song that he does so those are those are the main options right there okay thanks for sharing that with us today yeah. the card on which you're fighting is headlined by the light heavyweight clash between tiago santos and jamahal hill uh, i would like to hear your pick for that clash That's actually a really, really good fight. You know what I'm saying? It's not, that's probably the one that uh, of all the main events for all the cards I fought for, the one that intrigues me the most, because, you know, it's, it's a pretty clear, you know, uh, Hill is on his way up and Tiago seems to kind of be on his way down. And it's pretty um, uh, stark. I mean, uh, and so... I mean, obviously, Tiago has all the tools to beat Hill, but um, I think Hill's just hot right now. His confidence is 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 up there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he wants to do big things, and so I got I got Hill winning this fight. And what about a prediction for your fight? How do you imagine winning over Takeshi Sato? Man, uh, you know, Takashi, he's a tough dude, you know what I'm saying? He's got two knockouts in the UFC. Um, you know, obviously he killed the 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 regional scene over overseas. So, you know, he's a tough dude, but um I'm going to be a little bit too much for him in 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 a bunch of different areas. There's there's a bunch, there's several different ways I can see this fight going. I don't really see it getting out of the second round though. You know, um whether it ends up on the ground or whether we stay on the feet, um, you know, Like I, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling my shit right now. That's what, that's what I'm gonna say. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I'm gonna come out there and get after Takashi. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I'd like to make a statement. You know what I'm saying? Make a, make a real uh, claim to the division. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of really hot guys in the, uh, a lot of guys with a lot of momentum in the the welterweight division. So, you know. 
uh, I want people, I got to, I got to have a performance that, you know, gets me up there with the Ian Gary's and the, the Shavkats and the, the Sean Brady's and, you know, the, the, the Kamzats, you know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of young guys just taking over the welterweight division right now. And I got to get in that group. So, you know, I can start slowly taking those guys out too. You know what I mean? You you mentioned yeah you mentioned Ian Gary. Would you like to test yourself against uh, him and the other rest of the pack? Oh yeah, no, that's. I mean, ideally, if I could just fight those four guys, just like those be my next four fights. I mean, I would sign up for that tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, obviously, you know, I got some work to do, especially for the latter three guys like Shavkat, uh, Sean Brady, and. Uh, Times I don't think they're gonna let me fight those dudes anytime soon. But uh, you know, you know, I'm just gonna keep on going out there and taking dudes out until you know I beat everybody who people think is tough. You know what I'm saying? That's really all I want to do. I want to, you know, it's like if the people think somebody's tough, that's the person I want to fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm uh, I'm fighting for perceptions out here. You know what I mean? Brian, do you have any last messages? I. Uh, Any last messages? Um, you know, uh, if anything, I just want to say thank you for the fans. Make sure you guys tune in August 6th. You know what I'm saying? Watch your boy. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's crazy. Every time, if, if you watch all my fights, every time I get in the ring, I'm better. And I don't know if I've ever gotten as improved as much in between fights as I have in between my last fight and this fight coming up. So, Uh, make sure if you're a fan, you tune in to watch your boy fight on August 6th, all right? I'm pretty sure people will do it. Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with their upcoming fight, and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future, man. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You have a good one, all right? Have a nice one. Bye-bye.